<laughs> Monkey Mania. There is something so cute and so lovable about these little primates that everyone wants to be associated with them. President Reagan. Clint Eastwood. Right turn, Clyde. <laughs> and even Homer Simpson, to name just a few. Today, we are going to discuss one in particular. This one not only has crazy monkey strength, but also an advanced intellect to boot. No, I'm not talking about Dr. Zayas. Dr. Zayas, Dr. Zayas, oh, Dr. Zayas. I'm talking about Toki, who is the star of the game we are discussing today. Who is Juju and what does he have to do with this game? Let's find out as we learn about the history of Toki. The year is 1988 and TAD president Tadashi Yokoyama is developing the second arcade game to be released by his company. TAD was created by a number of ex-Data East employees with their most successful game being Cabal. According to Mr. Yokoyama, a freelance designer brought in a portfolio of designs including one of a funny looking monkey. The team were so enamored with this design they decided to create a whole game around him. Platform games were extremely popular at the time especially on the home systems. The designers wanted to create something similar for the arcade market in hopes that it would stand out. The original Japanese title was Juju Densetsu, but when it was licensed to Fabtech for release in the West, the name was changed to Toki. The game was designed by Akira Sakuma, who wanted to create a platform game only with a bit of tongue-in-cheek humor. As the story goes, Toki is living on an island somewhere with his girlfriend, the beautiful tribal princess Miho. The dastardly witch doctor Vuku Medio kidnaps poor Miho and places her in his palace on top of a volcano. In the process, he casts a spell to transform all the humans on the island into various animals and beasts. Apparently, Dr. Vuku Medio is a bit of a moron because the spell doesn't work as planned and Toki retains all of the knowledge from his human self. Toki sets out on a quest to take down Dr. Vukumidio, rescue his beautiful princess girlfriend Miho, and finally undo the terrible curse placed upon him. Toki was unleashed in the arcades in 1989. This is a six level platform game with mini bosses at the end of each one. After the brief introductory sequence, a stage map is shown before each level showing your progress similar to the arcade game Ghosts and Goblins. You take control of Toki who has to traverse various parts of the island including icy caves, the jungle, and eventually the lava infested volcano. There are various enemies and obstacles that will try to slow you down, but you do have a couple of tricks up your sleeve. Toki can spit projectiles out of his mouth, and also the ability to shoot up and diagonally, which definitely helps you in your quest. For some strange reason, you can only shoot left or right while jumping. There are all sorts of power-ups found throughout this game, including double or triple shots, the ability to breathe fire, a football helmet which gives you a limited shield, and shoes which allows Toki to jump higher. There are also fruit and coins that certain enemies will drop which will improve your score. If you collect 50 coins, you are granted an extra life. Toki can also jump on enemies' heads to kill them, similar to Mario and other platform games. Most enemies do require multiple hits to destroy and they will fight back. Toki is also a one-hit wonder, so you have to be very careful in your pursuit of the princess because one hit and you will die. Thankfully, there are various checkpoints all throughout the levels. The bosses you encounter are downright goofy with giant characters sometimes taking up more than one screen. 
the gate of Morna is a giant golden machine controlled by monkeys. Bashtar, who has nothing but hands and feet and a disembodied heart. Morgulvar, who throws letters that spell out the word burp, among others. The six levels that you have to traverse are Labyrinth of Caves, Lake Neptune, Caverns of Fire, Ice Palace, Dark Jungle, and Golden Palace. The playability is nice and tight with one button for jumping and one button for spitting. The graphics are very detailed with nice smooth animation. Not only do you get to control Toki above ground, but you also have to swim underwater and swing on vines. The character designs are a bit wacky, but so are the sounds which include plenty of digitized samples which would feel right at home in a Looney Tunes cartoon. The game is tough in my opinion, but through memorization it does get easier. The game over sequence is very reminiscent of the arcade game Ninja Gaiden. Princess Miho is crying for you to help, otherwise Toki will be killed. The game was a huge hit and was converted to a number of home systems which I will cover at the end of the video. <laughs> A remake was announced in 2009 and was considered vaporware for years after missing its 2011 release date. The remastered version was finally released in 2018 and it looks fantastic. An exceptional amount of detail was put into the game as the developers of this were huge fans of the original arcade game and it really shows. Everything has been redrawn in a comic book style and it looks great. There are multiple levels of smooth parallax scrolling and it almost makes it look like a real cartoon. The level layout is 1 to 1 from the arcade game, but since the playfield is now 16 by 9, you do get a wide view of the action which makes everything just a little bit easier. The music has also been given a significant boost with extra arrangements added from the arcade original. The controls feel exactly like the arcade game, so if you are a fan, you should definitely check this one out. A sequel was in development titled Juju 2 for the Super Famicom, but it was cancelled when the company went out of business. This was going to be an action puzzler with an overhead view. The source code was sold to Ultron who released the game as Little Magic for the Super Famicom. The game was also in development for the Atari Jaguar with only a couple of screens showing up in the May 1994 issue of Edge Magazine. This was cancelled due to the poor reception of the Atari Jaguar. Now let's check out the conversions. Most of these are fairly well done, so let's start off with the good old Commodore 64 version. This game was released in cartridge format for the ill-fated Commodore 64 GS, but thankfully it worked on a regular Commodore 64 as well. The graphics are large and fairly detailed, but the colors are very muddy, giving everything a washed out look. It does a good job at replicating the original arcade levels, but the problem is there are only five stages instead of six. 
There is also only one music track throughout the whole game which after playing for half an hour will make you wish for the onset of total deafness. The controls are fantastic and it feels like the arcade game. This was the only 8-bit computer conversion. A Spectrum version was planned but never released. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Amiga version. Now this is absolutely fantastic. Looking very close to the arcade original with some stripped down colors, everything from the arcade game is here from the opening sequence all the way to the credits with an enhanced ending sequence. The sprites are large and very detailed with excellent animation. We even have the same parallax scrolling found in the arcade game. We have both music and sound effects while you play, which is a definite plus. The controls are nice and tight and it feels just like Toki. There was one change from the original which I found a bit strange. In the opening sequence, Princess Miho was wearing a different outfit and has a <clears throat> wardrobe malfunction. Not quite sure how this one slipped by the sensors, but I'm sure glad it did. Let's stick with the 16-bit line and look at the Atari ST version. While looking similar to the Amiga, the colors are not as vibrant and it is missing the parallax scrolling. The graphics are large and detailed and they are animated nicely. The gameplay is pretty much identical to the Amiga version but the music has taken a hit as well. At least we get both sound effects and music while we play. I hate to be the bearer of bad news for all the Atari ST fans out there, but there is nary a nip slip in sight. The Atari Lynx version is up next and it's another really good conversion. This was developed by Scott Williamson and it was definitely a labor of love. He also designed the excellent conversions of Road Blasters and Stun Runner for the Atari Lynx. The sprites and backgrounds are detailed but everything runs at a lower resolution due to the hardware. Mr. Williamson was able to squeeze out 48 colors on screen at once when most games only display 16. It is missing the parallax scrolling though. I believe this is some of the best music available on any Lynx title. The controls are nice with two buttons available making it feel even closer to the arcade game than the home computer ports which only used one fire button. Overall, it's another quality conversion. The Sega Genesis received its own unique game entitled Toki Going Ape Spit, and it's a really good version. It's a sequel slash remake of the original game only with new levels and old ones that are greatly expanded. Each of the nine levels are split into three sections with checkpoints at the beginning of each one. Most of the bosses and enemies from the original game return. The gameplay is basically the same with different power-ups for Toki. The graphics are large and detailed with nice use of parallax scrolling and visual effects. The level Lava Long Volcano in particular looks great. The music is adequate but nothing too memorable. 
Control-wise, it feels just like the arcade game, so if you are a fan of Juju, be sure and check this one out. The NES version is up next and once again it's well done while trying its best to be faithful to the arcade game. Everything has been scaled down a bit with smaller graphics and less colors but it still looks good for an 8-bit version. Most of the arcade game made it over from the introductory sequence all the way to the final credits and everything in between. Unfortunately, there is also a whole lot of flicker going on when there is too much happening on screen at once. The game also gives you a health bar this time around which makes it quite a bit easier than the arcade game. Music and sound effects are typical NES fare which is only average in my opinion. The playability is fantastic and it feels like the arcade original. One conversion that was rumored to be almost complete but never released was the Atari 7800 version. For years this was considered vaporware but thankfully this was found and dumped. It looks fantastic with large detailed sprites although not quite as detailed as the NES version. For a prototype it appears to be almost 100% complete which included a near complete ending. All of the levels and bosses appear to be present. Hopefully the ROM will be released online at some point so we can all enjoy it. The game was also released on the iOS platform in 2009. Toki didn't get much love here in the United States when it was released in the arcades and I've never seen an actual arcade unit. My first experience with this game came from the Amiga version and I have loved it ever since. It is a difficult game but once you get the patterns down it's not too bad. If you need a little bit of monkey love be sure and check it out. You'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, if you would like to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Thank you all so much for watching.